Jordan, uh, Front Horse Gamer, we're here back uh, day three at PAX. We're checking out Beat Buddy right now, um, which is a platform kind of, but in a different way. It's more of an action rhythm game. It's, it's neat in the way that it's uh, combining a few genres, but in a way that you, you get to hear some classy tunes and at the same time uh, try to predict what's next a little bit. <laughs> It's actually a great summer. Uh, yeah, I have Wolf here with me today who's going to tell us a little bit about the game and tell us what we can expect. Sure. Uh, so basically what you already said, it's like an action adventure, zelda wish Super Mario type of game where every level is uh, based on a music song. So like we got from artists like Austin Wintry who did the uh, music on Journey. He produced the song and we got it and then we took a look like how the curve is and then we created a level out of it. Yeah. So that's, that's basically it. And, it, and it's interesting how you're able to do something like that because I mean, most people think of songs as in a very linear fashion, uh, fashion right. or you know, a, a, a platformer in a way that, okay, I'm going through the motions. Right. Here, the music inspires what you do next. Right. It, it, it carries you through the game more than just an ambience. Yeah. It, it, it influences the world, too. So you're, you're playing with a lot of interactive elements that are trying to all drive in one thing while creating an, a way that the gamer won't ignore it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was actually our idea when we started four years ago to create a music game that is not a music game. So, um, therefore, we are non-linear. So you can walk forwards and backwards in the music, and no playthrough is the same. So you will sometimes play the whole song in 40 minutes, or 30 minutes, all depending on the way you play it. But it's up to you. And did you find it hard, especially trying to mesh difficulties and, lev and level configurations when trying to pair them with a song? especially when you have such diverse music yeah. in this game? It actually took us like four years and five proto prototypes to get it right. Um, because the point is that the, the game mechanics need to represent the music, uh, but at the same time, it's kind of not when the song gets very, very full, you have a lot of game mechanics that are the instruments, uh, they have to work with each other somehow. So there was a lot of try and error, but over the last five proto prototypes, it was. Uh, we are happy with the solution that we got right now. And one of one of the things that I knew when I when I first saw the videos for this game is you have a huge range of music. Right. Uh, like I, I when I first started listening, I'm like, okay, it's all, it's all electronic influence, but it's all. I mean, you have jazz, swing. Yeah. You're you're kind of you have a little bit of something for everyone. Yeah. Did you guys actively pursue that kind of goal when you're doing it? It's it's actually like there's a lot of prejudices towards music games. Uh, and also, another thing is that some people say, oh, that is this in this game, I don't like rock music, I don't like dance music. So we didn't want to um, give anybody the excuse of saying, oh yeah, I don't like the music, so I cannot play this game. So we wanted to have like rock music, uh, jazz music, electronic music, dance music, all together, so people can feel that, that uh, um, if you make an action game first, like we did, and then add this musical value to it, um, it's something for everybody. And uh, so it's also a great way to approach and get to meet new artists because it's all exclusive songs. Did you find it really hard to try to, I mean, the music industry isn't necessarily the easiest thing to try to work within. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did, you, did you find it a really hard thing to find artists that would fit your project right? It's um, actually, it's kind of funny. We uh, talked with Austin Wintry after the E3. Um, we got two Interlab Up Awards at the Video, Video Games Likes and we met him backstage. And we were like, oh, Mr. Wintery, we are this small company from Germany, and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he was so cool, and he instantly worked with us. That was great. And um, also, the other artists have been very, very supportive. But some artists, where we thought, they call themselves indie, but they've been like um, very complicated. So, like, it was, it was really lucky that we found those six great artists that we wanted, and that they've been so supportive. But the music industry is very complicated. Yeah, so. I mean, when you, you jump into royalties, contracts, advances, not yeah, to mention yeah. just the sheer contracts you have to look at. And also every every territory uh, territory is, got, is like completely different. Like the U.S. has different mechanical rights companies uh, also collecting the money. Um, then in Germany and, and, and like meeting points up in Germany, we have the GEMA. So YouTube is it's forbidden to show music there at all. So it's very complicated. <laughs> but, but I think we are kind of like uh, pros after the two years of work, working with the music industry. And once you figure it out, it's actually a very interesting industry to work with. So, um, in, in terms of your, your the theme of the game, I mean, you're, you're offering more than just music, you know, more than pretty things to look at. Yeah. Was, was it hard 
because music games, I, I think our, our generation is just either burn out on them or just used to kind of jumping into them and go and thinking right. of them as a casual. Right, right, right. Did, right. You, did you think it was hard to include any other elements that would, you know, make the, the story-driven person or the, you know, the character-driven person pull to it? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it's actually, uh, for us it was extremely hard because um, from all the prototypes that we did, sometimes we had a prototype with way too much music that was way too casual and not any gameplay at all. Then we had too much gameplay and not any music interaction basically. It was just some lights blinking. So it took us quite a, quite a while to figure out this balance that you, because people is one of the few music games that can actually play without music. That was extremely important for us. But once you hear the music, the second dimension opens, opens up and the whole uh, game comes to, uh, comes to shine. Yeah, so, and it's a very integral part of the game. Totally, yeah. Um, what, what, of all things, why did you go with the underwater? I mean, what was the inspiration for the little oh, guy? Um, <laughs> I have to ask because he's so yeah, yeah, he's different. Actually, <laughs> um, actually, we now saying it's underwater, but we were not thinking about it. For some reason, we just uh, made a game without gravity, where you just fly or swim around. Normally, like, we didn't expect why people would care why he doesn't have any gravity because it's a it's on Symphonia it's a fantasy world mm -hmm. but at some point uh, people are saying oh this is a bit like Aquaria this is a bit like Echo the Dolphin we're like okay so if you want to have it then it's water now so although the real story is more like that it's a special gas that is on Symphonia and this is why he can swim or fly around so. yeah I, I think the color palettes had a little bit to do with that <laughs> yeah, 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 but that's mainly only the first level. This is this is the mine level that is right now here on the demo, um, and the second level is, is the jungle. So it's all greenish. So it could easily uh, be a gravity level, but for some reason, since the game started, more or less like a um, music parkour game, kind of like a, 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 from the bird's perspective, like from like like from top down. I don't know. It just kind of came that we turned the camera a bit and. Uh, yeah, now it's now it's underwater levels, and I know that people are like, "Oh no, underwater levels!" And now a full game with underwater levels. But um, well, it's actually pe people shouldn't did, underestimate it. People did have a lot of bad experiences with Echo the Dolphin. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or like really, really old school games. I mean, you have to look for a game that doesn't use gravity. Like, I mean, there's Insanely Twisted Shadow Panel who does it. It's Echo the Dolphin on the Genesis. Uh, but but then I mean, yeah. the list is really not that long. And it's also really, really hard to make game design with it because with gravity, so many good mechanics work. If you have no gravity, you have to um, emulate it over certain mechanics. Like we have the bass drum plant that kind of pushes you through walls. So we work with some kind of forces, but I mean, just the whole jumping part is completely missing. Mm -hmm. So this is like some people say, it feels like a platformer without platforms. So it's, uh, yeah. Uh, it's a, no, as I say, more than anything else, I, I, I'm curious what what launched the entire game because this, like I said, it's a, it's a different project, but I I would never expect a, a any kind of rhythm, any kind of music game to go in this kind of direction. Right. I mean, right. you you've taken platform, turned it completely sideways, basically, right, yeah, yeah. and given players a different experience. It's it's interesting to see what the creative process would be to to crank something like that out. Yeah. It was actually, I think it was mainly the team that we had, because uh, um, one of our founders, Bulas, he's a musician. So uh, when we all from the art university, and um, so we kind of had this, uh, this team um, that could do crazy stuff together. So then we kind of came up with the idea in the university in Hamburg to, during our studies, how would it be to actually have like a game where you can only move to the music and gain new abilities when new songs are kicking in and adapt to their movements, like snare based on hi-hat. And um, from that on, it was so exciting to see how much more can we go with that, that actually this interactive music idea. And yeah, and after four years, it's Beat Buddy. And, it's, uh, and also, we were not thinking at all about like, okay, so is that, should we stop? Where is it leading? It was just like, every time we uh, gave it to gamers, tested it or we played it we got like oh this is working this is not working at all let's cut this away and make more of that so it was a very uh it felt like a process i mean the whole process was like this but it was always <laughs> aiming to some dark spot in the game design universe where we maybe secretly knew that something like that would work so uh yeah it was very very exciting oh, fantastic yeah. well i want to thank you for taking a little bit of time with me today i do thank appreciate you, it yeah and until next time folks
Thank you.